So I thought it'd be fun to implement Heyerholtzer's 1873 algorithm for finding an Euler tor or an Euler walk in a graph. We'll start with the tor case. Um, and so remember that this is a, an algorithm that in some sense gives us a constructive proof that if a graph has all even degrees and is connected, then, uh, then it has an Euler tor right there. It has a, a walk that uh, it starts at one vertex, hits every edge and exactly once, and comes back to where it started. All right, so let's uh, let's implement it and see how it goes. So, um, all right, starting here from scratch, uh, what do we want? Uh, the first thing I think we should do is just to check that if it has one. So let me make a function. Again, you could, uh, like with uh, some of the other one, other graph functions we implemented like graph search you could imagine trying to implement this as a method on the graph class um, but it's kind of nice to think that we just have a graph and uh, as long as it implements a basic like neighborhood structure or be able in this case we just need to be able to get the degrees then we can check if it's Eulerian um, so um, I guess we need to do two things I guess we need to um, check if it's connected so I want um, do I have a function called is connected for a graph? Um, I can't remember what we implemented last time. Uh, I think what we did was we implemented whether um, two vertices were connected. So maybe I need to, um, let's do, let's implement this first. So I wanted to know if it's connected and I want all the degrees even. All right, so, um, so all the degree the, for every uh, vertex v in the graph. Um, do I have access to the vertices this way? Let's try this as well. Um, I forget how I give access to the vertices. Do we have access to the vertices? We might have to add in a whole bunch of stuff. This is basically what I want to do, though. I want to return that um, it's connected, and I think this will just fail, of course, because I don't have any of these uh, any of these methods implemented. But we're doing this top down, so this could be okay. Um, let's try this. Um, let's make a graph. If you're uncomfortable with me using code that obviously has not been implemented yet, um, uh, I recommend trying it because it's it's kind of nice. It's a little bit freeing to know that the code is going to fail. You don't have any worries that it's going to fail. But you, but looking at how it fails actually gives you some hints on where to write your next code. So let's make a graph. So um, um, I'm going to do this this little trick I did before here, right, where I'm just going to write it as a, a string. Let's make a very simple one that really should have an Euler tor, um, A to B, B to C, C to D. Let's split those up. Um, and that's run it. Okay, right. It doesn't know what a graph is. Um, yeah, right. Because we didn't uh, do that. So um, I could do a couple things here. I guess I could try to import the graph we implemented, and that makes sense. Maybe I'll do that. All right, from the graph from the other video I made. So um, that's sitting here in a file called uh, graph live code dot pi. Let oops, I don't need to put the dot pi. Let's import a graph. And uh, now when it runs, oh, it ran. It ran. Great, <laughs> it's perfect, done, ship it. Um, but I was supposed to check that this thing really was uh, um, Eulerian. So I wanna print, uh, is Eulerian G? Um, I just run this and, okay, it says it doesn't know what it means to be connected. And uh, we know how to implement is connected, right? Because I think if I were to, um, if I were to just run a depth first search, um, and check that all the vertices actually uh, were reached by that depth first search, then I know the graph is connected. So um, let's try that. So let's just pick any vertex. Um, and uh, I don't remember. Let me look at that code. Do we have a, a method that just gives me any old vertex? Um, no. In fact, I have no access to the vertices at all. That's no good. Let me add a method right in here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a way of accessing just an arbitrary vertex. I'm going to call it any vertex. And what it will do is it'll just return um, 
it's going to go into the dictionary and pick out just any old key out of that dictionary of neighbors. And so the usual way of doing that is um, just grabbing an iterator and then taking the first thing. So next iter of self dot neighbors. All right, let's do that. Now at least I can get any old vertex and um, do that any. That, we, that gives me at least a way to start. Um, and now I'm going to run depth first search on that. I need depth first search as well, though, so I better go get it. So graph search. That was that that uh, depth first search was implemented in a, in a file called uh, graph search live code. Let's just pull that one in too. And now let's uh, grab any vertex and um, run depth first search. So um, that first search, G from V. Now, in the end, this is going to give us a tree, um, and it's got keys, which are vertices. And so I just want to check that I got the right number of things here. Right. And so if I got all the vertices, then I'm connected. So I think that should work. And now when it runs, oh, I spelled import wrong. All right. And it says it doesn't know what V is. Um, I must have implemented this uh, somehow. Wait, where is V? It says it doesn't know what V is. Oh, right here. Yes, yes, right. Because actually, not only did I need to, <laughs> to, to get uh, any vertex here, I needed to iterate over the vertices. And I think we did a terrible thing by not giving any access to the vertices. Um, we can do it now with depth first search now that we have any vertex. Um, but really, this thing should have access to the vertices. So we had originally put this dot V, which was a set of vertices that was stored in the graph, and then we lost it because uh, we didn't need it anymore. It was kind of um, already present in the uh, in this neighbor's um, dictionary. But let's bring it back. Um, and the way we'll bring it back is we'll just bring it back as some property, um, which will just give us a way to iterate over the keys in that dictionary. So um, there they are, right? So the, the, the self.neighbors has, has an entry for every vertex, so we can just return the iterator over them. And I don't want to have to put parentheses every time I use this, so let's make it a property. All right. So, all right, good. I think we're, we're able to go back now, and uh, let's run it. And actually, it says it's, it, it says it's good. <laughs> uh, there's always this feeling like when, when you write code this way and then it actually works and now you say, oh, well, now I don't know if it works. Like before I knew it wasn't going to work. And, I, and then when it didn't work, I was confirmed in that belief. But now that it just says it worked, I don't know if it really worked because I don't have actually a very good test here. So let's make another, let's do something, let's make it, um, let's make it non-Eulerian. So let's add a vertex, let's call it uh, D and um, well, this should be, I think, hopefully obvious. Um, if I go, I should assert that it's not Eulerian anymore after I add that vertex. And it says, oh, but it says it is. So adding this vertex, um, it's still Eulerian. Oh, weird, weird, weird. Let's check. Um, right, so if I give it all four vertices, um, it says it's Eulerian. Um, oh, because I already had the vertex D. That's why. That was foolish. Okay, let's go back. Let's back it up. I need. Uh, I thought I had made a cycle there. In fact, this first one shouldn't shouldn't have worked at all. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> what happened? Um, <clears throat> the degrees are not all even, and because of course I didn't actually check that they were even here. Right? This is supposed to say that they're even. It's not just that they exist. Um, so this should be mod two equals zero. Ha, ah, good. And it says that this one is not Eulerian, right? Um, but if I make it a cycle, it is, and now we're good to go, right? So A to B to C and back, um, it's Eulerian. And if I add this vertex D, it's not Eulerian. And it, even if I connect it with an edge, right? If I add the edge, uh, let's say A to D, right? Even it's connected. Um, but it's not uh, it's not Eulerian. And I got an error here because I added some extra parentheses, right? Remember that adding an edge, I don't I don't pass it the pair, I pass it 
the beginning and the end. So there we go. <clears throat> now this is not so satisfying. It's just like when it runs and it just says, okay, fine, I'll take that. Um, it'd be nicer if we could actually get the path out, right? To actually tell me what is this Tor. And really that was the whole point, right? This Hierholzer algorithm is supposed to actually tell us what the Tor is. We're supposed to be able to just um, basically print it out. So um, let's do that next, right? Let's make a function. And what it will do, um, given a graph G, if it has an Euler Tor, it's going to return it. And let's just return it as like a, um, a list or something. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the weird things about the kind of surgery that we did to, um, to when we kind of walk through this algorithm intuitively is that we end up with a cycle that we can't make it any longer. But um, then we end up with another cycle and we kind of want to splice one into the other. Now we can do this with lists and sort of slicing lists. Um, and, but there's something you should feel wrong when you're doing a lot of slicing of lists. Like it should like set off red flags. All right, it's a kind of code smell, right? It's like, like it's not necessarily a bug, but it's probably not so good. Um, and in this case for performance, like you don't want to keep recopying the lists. Um, let's use the right data structure for the right thing. In this case, probably something more like a doubly linked list um, would work. In fact, really, we're just going to use a doubly ended queue, uh, which is implemented with a doubly linked list in this case. Um, and I'm just going to pull one out. Um, I have one um, in this library called uh, DS2. Um, this is a collection of all kinds of Python data structures. You can find it um, if you um, look on GitHub, Don Shahi data structures, you'll find it. Um, it comes from a whole book of data structures that you can check out. All right, but I can import um, a doubly linked list as a deck. So this uh, deck is a doubly ended queue. It adds, it supports operations like add first, add last. And rather than doing this surgery, what we'll do is we'll kind of cycle the list so that we can always, um, right, if you have a cycle, um, you can kind of remove from the beginning and add it to the end and it will just shift the cycle around. Which is a nice clean way of kind of changing where the, the Euler tour starts. All right, so I'm going to make, um, I'll start with this where I store the path as a deck. Um, so I create a blank, an empty one that's going to store it. And um, I need some kind of data structure that's going to keep track of the edges and keep track of which ones I've used before. And then when I get back to a vertex, I'd like to iterate over just the ones that were not used. Now, the first time I tried to implement this, what I did was I made this data structure that would, uh, first I like looped over all the vertices and for every vertex, I got a list of the edges. And as I used them, I could remove them from the list. Um, and then I would try to do a traversal this way. And then I realized something, which is that this is just the graph. So really the easiest way to keep track of this is just to make a copy of the graph. If I make a copy of the graph, then I just remove the edge and then it's the normal kind of traversal, right? If I get to a vertex, the edges that are left are the edges that have not been used. And so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to make a copy of the graph. So let's call it H. Um, and so I'm going to make a copy of it. I have to give you the vertex set and the edge set. So um, I can do that. Um, vertex set is the vertices and the edge set are the edges. Um, very easy to do. And um, before I get too far, obviously I don't really want to spend any time trying to find an Euler tour unless I know one exists. So um, um, so I'm going to put is Eulerian um, G. So only if they're really, if I, I can do the check, I can check all the degrees first, check that it's connected. And if so, then I'll go, I'll, I'll start copying the graph. And now as I search through H, I'm going to start removing edges. So um, it's going to be really handy that we have this remove edges um, function. And um, we have a, um, we have a, another little challenge here, but let's see how this goes. So I think uh, I'll start with some current, I'll set some, the current vertex, right? So I always think of these algorithms in terms of seeing a graph and putting my finger down on the graph and I'm moving around. Um, and so wherever, and when you imagine yourself solving one of these problems in some physical metaphor, you have to think about 
storing all the a important aspects of that, of that vision. In this case, I need to know where my finger is. So that's the current vertex. And I'm going to start anywhere. So um, I have a, a function for that, right? Any vertex. OK. So give me any vertex to start. And um, I guess I could have also started in H. Um, let's do that. This uh, makes more sense for us. And now um, I want to use up all the edges in H. I've already checked that the graph really does have an Euler tor, uh, assuming I believe this theorem. But <laughs> this Eulerian is Eulerian returned true. So um, I expect it to go all the way until there are no edges left in, uh, in H. So while h dot m is greater than 0, so while there's any edges left, I'm just going to go move along. Now, if the degree of the current vertex is positive, I could just take any of its neighbors and move along, All right, add it to my, my path and go forward. So, if, um, so that's saying like if the degree of my current vertex is positive, then um, I'm going to see the next vertex will just be any of the neighbors of the current vertex. So next vertex is uh, it's going to be uh, h neighbors, right? I'm going to get the neighbors of the current vertex, right? So remember that neighbors gives us an iterator over the neighbors. And so I just take the next one, right, with next. That's how you use iterators in Python. and. Um, and now I'm going to add this one to the path. I'm just going to put it, tack it onto the end. Um, and once I've put that new vertex onto the path, um, I want to remove the edge that I just used. Okay, so remove edge. Um, and it's the edge that went from the current vertex um, to the next vertex. And this is one case where it's uh, one of the cases where it's very clear useful to use a graph as the data structure because remove edge handles it from both ends for us. So if I later get to that um, other end of this edge, if I come back to next vertex, it won't try to use this edge back to current vertex from that side either. It removes it from both sides. All right, so I have that. Um, this is pretty good. What do we need now? Um, we need to now take a step, right? Current vertex. Um, should now be equal to the next vertex, right? So now, now we've kind of moved our finger along that edge. Now we're pointing at the next one. Um, now this will give us kind of a greedy, um, a greedy walk, right? It just keeps taking until I get to, uh, until what? Actually, it, it, this right now it has this problem that I won't use all the edges, right? I could get stuck in the Hierholzer algorithm had this clause. Like once you get stuck, you have to go back to some other vertex that has some edges coming out of it. And you've got to continue the cycle from there. Um, and one way to think of this is imagine that that vertex where um, there's still some remaining edges coming out of it. If I made it so my, the cycle I found started at that vertex, then when I got stuck, I would be back there, and then I could continue. And so the way you do this, right, is um, right. It's the else clause here because it was I got to a degree verte zero vertex. Um, I'm just gonna like pull from uh, the end, the beginning of the path, and tack it onto the end. Um, so it's kind of like just cycling the the path, right? It's a doubly ended queue, so you can take from one end, put it on the other end. And that will have the effect of kind of just moving the cycle along itself. All right. So um, in this case, I'm going to set the current vertex to be equal to, uh, you know, pulling off the first vertex, um, and then I'm going to just add it to the end. All right. So add first, remove first, and add last. Um, our standard methods on the deck here. All right. And I just put it on there. And that's all I need to do. And I just continue, right? Because when it loops around again, I'll see, like, does that vertex have degree zero? You might be concerned that somehow I would get stuck in an infinite loop where I go along and I keep cycling around and just never works. But, the, but I, I know that if there are any edges left, since the graph is connected, one of those edges comes out of a vertex that's in the cycle. So at some point, I'll find some more edges and I'll be able to continue this algorithm. All right. Um, and I think this works, so let's run it. Um, it says it works, um, but I didn't actually run it. So let's print, um, say, Euler tour, 
And uh, actually, many of you watching this are know that this is not going to do anything interesting. It printed none because I didn't actually return anything. Um, you might think I should just return the path. Um, but the path is a doubly linked list. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure that's useful. Um, this doubly linked list doesn't have an iterator, um, which is a little annoying. So um, I'm just going to make another function which takes a doubly linked list and turns it into um, a regular list for us. So let's call it um, um, deck to path or something like this. Or in this case, it's a tour. Yeah, actually, you can see my autocomplete jumped up there because I, I called it deck to tour previously. Um, so uh, I'm going to give it a list. Um, so let's give it, or actually, I'm give it the doubly linked list and I'm going to iterate over it. And I don't care, I'm going to destroy this thing. That is, I'm just going to remove stuff from the doubly linked list and add it to the path. Um, so let's just make an empty list for the path. And then, um, you know, while there's anything in there, I'm going to just remove uh, from, the, from the beginning and append it to the end of the path. Right, so um, I think this is an okay thing to do in one line. All right, so I just pulled something off the beginning of the, of the deck and added it to the path, and then I'll return the path. And I guess what I need to do here um, is return um, deck to tour of the path. All right. Now when I run it, what do I get? Okay, I got A, C, B. All right. Uh, I constructed it to have a particular Euler tour, A, B, C. Uh, it gave me A, C, B, but that's also valid, right? It's just going around the other way. Um, um, this is sort of a, a like a, too easy a case to even be interesting. Um, let's get rid of this stuff for now. Let's make the graph more interesting. Let's make a graph that really does have a couple loops. So it has to go around and then around again. All right, so um, maybe it has uh, A, B, C, D. Um, I will add D, A here, but I'm also going to add um, B, C, and then B, E, and C, E. I think this has, uh, I think this is like a triangle and a square sort of overlapping. Um, and when it runs, oh, it's not Eulerian. I messed it up. Um, let's, let's check really quick here. Why, what is the degree of A is two. The degree of B is one, two, three, four. The degree of C is one, two, three, four. So C has even degree. Um, D has degree one, two, ah, three. How is that possible? Wait, what is the degree of D? No, degree of D is two. This looks Eulerian to me. Uh-oh. So watching this, I'm sure that you probably worked this out already, but you could stop, as, as I'm going to do here, and draw a picture, because there's nothing better than a picture for uh, getting our head around this graph. So. Um, what was what were the edges I had? Um, here's what I claimed to write: A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, B, C, B, E, and C, E. So I thought I was drawing A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. Right, and then I had, oh, B to C, this was supposed to be B to D. I see, I added this one twice. Okay, all right, I think I can fix this now. Let's go back. Um, this was supposed to be B to D, and uh, D to E. There we go. All right, um, so it says that I have, uh, this was supposed to, yeah, so B, D, uh, B, E, uh, okay. So it says I have the following. I'm just going to write it down. A, B, C, D, E, B, D. Now, um, I guess I should be careful about one thing, which is that as a tour, this doesn't look so, um, so good um, because it doesn't start and end where it's supposed to. I guess implicitly I was supposed to add this to the end as well. 
Um, and I'm going to go back and add that to the code in a second. Um, but let's just check if I draw this graph now. Right, this was what was supposed to happen. It's supposed to have these edges like that. Um, the tour it gives me, well, at least a walk it gives me is A to B to C to D, then to E back to B to D. And then I claim that I should have added the A in there at the end. And that will give me the full tour. Um, so if I go back to my code here, um, I'm just going to append um, whatever's at the beginning of the list back to the end and run it again. Um, this time, you see, I ran it again and it gave me a different tour, which is okay. Um, it, the reason it doesn't run, give the same results every time is related again. You've seen this maybe before, which is that I have a set or a dictionary of strings the order in which they come out is going to be different. So I'm going to get different iteration. I'm going to get a different greedy search, um, but it's still valid. And in fact, I should expect that um, there are really like two N different Euler tours um, for any Eulerian graph. Uh, actually, there's at least two N. There could be, it could be more than that. The reason like for given tour, um, you know, I can shift it and start at any other point so I can get different answers that way. I can also reverse the ordering and get different answers that way. So I should expect that if there is any Euler tour, there should be at least um, two N of them. And in fact, um, I think there could be, there could be even more. Um, you can imagine that depending on how you arrange the cycles and what order you look at the cycles, um, you can get very different numbers. In fact, this is a classic computational problem to think about like how many Euler tours does a given graph have? Now, uh, I'm on a roll here, so maybe I should actually do the path case as well. Right? So if I want to check not just an Euler tour, but an Euler path, um, an Euler tour is an Euler path. Um, oh, sorry, Euler, what's called Euler walk. Um, it's not a path um, necessarily. Um, if I want to, to find an Euler walk, that is, it might maybe starts at an odd degree vertex and maybe ends at another um, odd degree vertex. One way um, to do this would be to try to check, find the odd degree vertex, try to work from there. Um, but it will kind of break our algorithm because the algorithm you know, really depends on this cycle, cycling of the doubly ended Q. Um, so there's another way to do it, which I think is kind of cute. Um, we can we can just add a new vertex. Um, and we'll add that vertex and we'll just connect the two odd degree vertices. And if you connect the two odd degree vertices, then um, they, their degrees go up by one. And so they become even. And then it goes back to the Euler tour case. And then we just remove that vertex um, and work from there. So this is, um, this is how this looks. So um, let's try this. Um, I want to find an Euler path in a graph. And um, it could be that all the degrees are even, in which case I can just run my um, run the algorithm I already have for finding an Euler tour. So let's find all the odd degree vertices first. So let's just make a list of all the odd degree vertices. Um, so it's going to be just like all the, oops, all the vertices in the graph um, if uh, the degree is odd, right? So the degree mod two should be one. That's how you check if something's odd. So the degree mod two is uh, one. Okay, so that'll give me all the odd degree vertices. And first thing I check is like, if there are no, if, if there are zero of them, I can just return the Euler tour. So if um, yeah, the length of that list is uh, zero, then um, I'll just run the, the function I have. And uh, I can call this right off the bat just to make sure, because th this should be a case where that happens. And um, it gives me one. So it seems to work in this case. If I had, um, uh, let's see, I, I can make exactly two of these vertices have odd degree just by removing any one edge, really. And in this case, if I do that, right, it says, okay, it's not Eulerian. Um, in fact, it, it's a kind of a weird, it shouldn't have even called this, should it have? Let's see. <clears throat> I 
Oh yeah, so it didn't even pass this. <clears throat> it returns none when I ask for the path because there, it doesn't know how to find one yet, right? In the case where um, the degrees are odd. So this has two degree odd, odd degree vertices. Um, that's the other case. Um, so let's check this one. So if it has exactly two, then now this is great because that list of odds actually has the two vertices that have odd degree. And I know that those are the ones I want to connect. Now you might think I'll just add an edge between them, but there's a problem if you do that because they might already have an edge between them. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add a new vertex. I'm going to give it some weird, I'll just call it star, star, star. And um, hopefully that's not already a vertex in the graph. Um, you could try to pick something some other way to make sure that it's a unique um, object, unique hashable object that's different from any of the other vertices. Um, but then I can add an edge from um, uh, the two vertices in odds. Let's call them, let's give them names. Let's call them UV, right? So these are the two vertices in my, the, my two odd degree vertices. And so I can add one here. Um, and uh, I'll add another one. All right. <clears throat> okay, so what have I done? I've added a vertex and I added edges to, to the two odd degree vertices. Now the new vertex has degree two and U and V, which had odd degree, they now have a new edge coming out of each of them. They now have even degree. All right, so I'm in the Euler tour case, so I can just grab the Euler tour, um, and uh, well, let's do that. So the tour is equal to Euler tour of G. So I've kind of rearranged the graph so it has an Euler tour, but now um, it's not so uh, it's not so good because it's um, it's got this vertex that doesn't even exist and has edges that don't even exist. Um, so we want to remove those. <clears throat> now, um, we can do this actually pretty easily. I think uh, maybe the simplest thing to do is to find the index of our new vertex because it'll appear in our in our tour. Um, it should appear only once, um, but if it started there, I guess it could appear twice. Um, let's find the first place it appears. I'll call that index. Um, so tor.index of, sorry, sorry, sorry. So the index function on a list in Python gives you the index of the first occurrence. So it kind of just goes through until it finds it. So there's my index. And now I just want to slice up the list into pieces. So um, I want everything before it and everything uh, after it. Um, what does that look like? So I guess um, I'm going to take the tor I want to go everything up to, but not including it. So um, index, and then I want everything after it to the end, right? So that would be tor uh, index plus one, um, all the way to the end, but not all the way to the end, because you know, I kind of expect that, uh, that the, the length of this should be less uh, than the length of, uh... oh, and I, I've got the order wrong too, right? I see, I see. I think I should actually start with the second half. Let's do this. Let's take it uh, index plus one up to, but not including the end. Um, so that I go up to minus one. Um, and uh, then I take everything in the beginning up to the index, okay? And uh, is this going to work for us? Um, maybe. Let's see. Let's see what it does. All right, so I have a graph. Um, now, um, one thing I should note, okay, I, I removed the edge DE. So D and E had even degree, now they're down to odd degree. So um, it's good that it returns something that starts with D and ends with E. I don't know, um, if I keep running it, I keep getting D and E, huh? So I'm a, this is a little bit, you can actually see 
the, in this line here where I'm doing some kind of weird arithmetic, this is, this is where bugs always hide. And if there is a bug in here, you'll let me know. Um, it seems to work. I haven't actually checked the case where the tor comes back and finds a tor that starts and ends at our new vertex. Um, in which case, uh, somehow, maybe it still works. Um, index 0 to 1, uh, up to 0. I think it still works. I think this is right. So um, we would have to test it some more to see, but uh, this is sort of a quick and dirty way of kind of adding in the vertex and then just removing it out of the list in the end to get um, an Euler path in the case where there's a, in a pair of odd degree vertices. Okay, so. Um, so that wraps up kind of uh, an, imp an implementation of Hierholter's algorithm, both in the Tor case, which is the case of all even degrees, and um, the, path, the more general path case where either it has um, all even degrees or just those two odd degree vertices. So that gives us um, an algorithm. Now you can kind of hopefully um, see uh, how it works. It also gave us a chance to uh, use our graph data structures, put them to work, and um, and do a kind of graph search traversal algorithm uh, using them. All right, so um, uh, Euler toys are sort of a classic. You'll see them in other cases. You may also find that there's some other algorithms for finding Euler toys that lead to interesting questions. Um, one notable one also from the 1800s is Fleury's algorithm. Um, and so I encourage you to look some of those up, and um, I'll see you next time.